Good evening, Bethesda Church. It's Wednesday, April 29th, 2020, and boy, we're just rushing through the month of uh, April, and May is just around the corner. Um, time is flying. We're seeing some warmer weather come in, and hopefully over the next few weeks it'll warm up even more, praying and hoping for that, and uh, also trusting that God will continue to show His providential care, mercy, and love towards you, towards your families, as He has been doing so far, because He is faithful uh, the, the message that I want to share with you tonight is from the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. It's really a message about prayer. I've entitled it, Praying for a Nation. And I'd like to unpack that a message for you. Uh, but first, I'd like to read the first couple of verses uh, from verse 16 to verse 18, and then uh, go on to the message. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. And he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. Amen. So, if you've read this passage before, and I think most of us have, uh, as, as God's children, as uh, people of the Word, uh, you'll, you'll realize that it's about prayer. From verse 13 all, all the way through verse 18, James is talking about prayer. He's talking about prayer for those who are suffering. He's talking about the prayer of faith. And here, in this last section, he talks about the fervent prayer uh, or the effectual prayer of a righteous person and the fact that that kind of prayer has power. In Scripture, we find that God hears the prayers of His people uh, right from the beginning of, of, of the, the Bible in Genesis. Right through to the end, uh, we see that God answers prayer when His people are in fellowship with Him, when His people are seeking Him, God reveals Himself. And and I remember the promise of Scripture that says that the, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and His ears are open to their prayers. We have a God who is alive, who lives forevermore, and who hears the prayers of His children. And He responds according to His wisdom and His timing. Sometimes He says yes, sometimes He says no, other times He says wait. And God knows exactly what He's doing, and He has um, the protection and the well-being of His uh, children in mind, especially from a spiritual perspective, spiritually speaking. And I believe that uh, the passage that we read tonight is, is really a passage that talks about both the power of prayer and also the faithfulness of God towards His people when they pray. When we look around us today, obviously we see this, the pandemic that's around us, we hear Reports that shock us, that perplex us, uh, reports that cause us to, to question um, the future and what, and what, what we can expect uh, from the economy and from our president and all kinds of questions and theories circulating through the news media outlets. But ultimately, we must remember that God is still in control and that he's willing to hear the prayers of his people and he's willing to answer the prayers of his people. We have the promise from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 that says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. We have many promises in, uh, in Scripture about the faithfulness of God and His willingness to hear and to reveal Himself when His people pray and seek His face, when they seek, with him, seek him with all their hearts, when they love Him, uh, to the core of their being, and they seek Him. God answers and, and hears. And the first thing I'd like to, to say to encourage you tonight is this, that when God answers prayer for a nation, He isn't uh, looking, he's, all, he's not looking for a perfect person. We find in this passage that Elijah is, is far from perfect. Uh, the Bible tells us that Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And when I think about that word nature, I think of Paul and I think of Barnabas who were in Lystra. And the Bible tells us in the book of Acts that after they had healed a crippled man, those around them just marveled and they started to call them Hermes and Zeus and almost to, to worship them. And Paul and, 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 and Barnabas turned around and said, uh, we are people with a nature just like yours. We're, we're imperfect people. We're not, we're not gods. And, and neither was Elijah. In fact, we, we read in uh, 1 Kings, uh, following the victory of Elijah on Mount Carmel, that he fled Jezebel because he was afraid for his life. And he got to the mountain and God showed up and spoke to him through that 
still small voice to that whisper that we read about in the book of First Kings. And so we see that not, Elijah isn't a perfect man. He's he, he succumbs sometimes to weaknesses. He, he has spells of depression. He's a man that has his own weaknesses and his own battles. Yet, he's a righteous man, and he has a, re- a relationship with God. And, and that really speaks about our condition today. We live in bodies that are, are, are affected by the nature of sin. Although, in Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been set free from the tyranny and from the power of sin, and we can live a life of victory and fullness in Christ. Yet we are still beset with our own weaknesses and weaknesses that have to do with with this body that we live in and with the uh, atmosphere around us and the war that happens around us, the spiritual warfare that wages in the spiritual realm and that we fight on a daily basis through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God and the armor that God gives us according to Ephesians 6. But we must remember that we are not perfect people, and, and we are people still prone to error and, and weaknesses. But the amazing truth about God in Scripture is this, that God hears the prayers of those who He considers righteous. Like I said, His eyes are open, and, and His ears are also open. God hears the prayers of the righteous. And we are righteous because we are in Christ. We have a living relationship with Him, and we are accounted as righteous and justified based on what Christ has done for us. And we are not standing in our own righteousness, a righteousness that comes from the law, but the righteousness that comes by faith through Jesus Christ. And being accounted as righteous and being in Christ, we have the assurance that we can be heard and that when we approach the throne of grace to pray for a nation, to pray for our leaders, to pray for our country, that God will hear us through Christ and in Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, in chapter 1, that God has blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless in His sight. And further on, it says that in love, God adopted us and he did this through Jesus Christ according to his purpose to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved in Jesus Christ as children of God as people of God as weak as we are with our bodily frailties uh you know deficiency perhaps in our our cell count or vitamins or who knows what we are we are beset with weaknesses these bodies are frail these these, these bodies decompose, but in all of that, God is still merciful and He hears us when we pray. He hears us even in our weaknesses, even when we're sick, even when the doctors give us a diagnosis and, and it seems as though we can't get up. God is faithful and He hears even the prayers that don't have an audible voice, even the thoughts and the desires of our heart that we express to Him as a prayer when we're weak. And maybe when we're even sick. Elijah was dealing with a situation in the nation of Israel that was similar to ours. And it was really a time of judgment because God has, had proclaimed judgment on the nation. And, and God had withheld the blessings that he had promised in, in Deuteronomy chapter 12, or in chapter 28, excuse me. If you read in that chapter, it's a chapter of, of blessings and curses. And the blessings follow the obedience of Israel, and the curses follow the disobedience of Israel. But one of the blessings in verse 12 and verse 13 of that chapter is that God would pour out rain on the people. It was a sign of His, his, his pleasure and His blessing upon the people if it rained. But now, for three and a half years, as we read in this passage, God holds back the rain after Elijah prays. And it was a way of God sending a message to Israel that he was displeased with their Baal worship because under the leadership of Jezebel and Ahab, the nation of Israel had been led into idol worship and this was highly displeasing to God for his people to do something like this. So we have, a, a first of all, a man who is weak, who is who's beset with weakness, who has a nature like ours, yet when he prays, we, we learn another valuable truth that the prayer of a righteous man has power. Even though he's not perfect, it is powerful, it is effectual. Because we read in the scripture that as he prayed, he prayed seven times. Um, He bowed his face between his knees 
and and he probably faced uh, the the ground in a humble posture. Um, he prayed seven times, and after the seventh time, there was a sign of a cloud in the heavens, and it began to rain uh, later on. And it was an answer to Elijah's prayer. It was a it was a prayer that was marked by power, and truly, the prayer of a righteous man is effectual, and it does have power. It has power because, first of all, a, a, a man who's righteous and who prays effectually is under the dominion and leadership of the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of power. And and where when power comes upon us like it came upon the disciples uh, on the day of Pentecost, it really changes our lives. The Spirit of God, as you know, was upon Elijah and the Spirit of God was using him mightily. And one of the great marks of an effectual prayer life and an effective prayer life is a prayer life that is saturated, that is led by the person of the Holy Spirit. And we find that even in the book of Acts, as the people of God are praying, and as they're seeking God, they're filled again with power. And power comes upon us so that they can speak boldly and do the mighty works of God. And, and that's that's so important for us today during this pandemic, this, during this season of time. God is, is looking for people to take and immerse in His power in the person of the Holy Spirit, to fill them up again. And, and when those people pray, they are truly an instrument of praise and glory in the hands of God. And God uses them in mighty ways. Uh, and, and the devil sees them as a great opposition, but also as a threat to his plans and to his kingdom and to his purposes. And so my prayer, my desire for myself and for all of us is that we would not just realize that we're imperfect people, but that we would realize that Prayer that is bathed, that is saturated in the person of Christ, and the person of the Spirit, has great effect, and it is powerful. When we pray in the Spirit, and when we're in Christ, and when we live in a relationship with Jesus Christ, when we know Him and approach His throne, the promise of God is that He will hear us. And if we remain in Christ, according to John 15, the Bible tells us that we can ask and we will receive if we remain in Him, God answers us and God responds to our prayers. And I believe that, you know, we see uh, a great example of this in the early church when they're praying for the apostle, Peter, who's in prison. And as the church is praying, the Bible says that Peter has that miraculous intervention from God and he's freed from prison because the church was praying earnestly for Peter. And just like Elijah here is praying earnestly, fervently, God's people are taught to pray thirdly, um, not just when they're imperfect, not just because that prayer has power, but but when that prayer is persistent, thirdly, God answers. Sometimes it takes persistent prayer. It takes us going to God like Paul went to God three times for his thorn in the flesh, and on the third time, God answered. Jesus prayed again three times in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was persistent. We see persistence in prayer in the great men of God, how they continue to pray, how, how they don't stop. And even the early church in the book of Acts, they continue persistently with one accord. They continue in prayer until the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit falls upon them. And I think that the, the time that we're living right now calls for men and women of God, people of God, to pray persistently, consistently to God, believing that He will answer. And I believe that some of the great answers that that have already come, that some of the ways in which God has been working in our time is the result of the prayers of our church members and of our leaders and those who have been praying uh, in our community and around the world. And let's not stop praying. Let's not stop being persistent. Let's continue to be persistent and believe that God will answer us as we persist in prayer because the promise of Scripture is true, that God is faithful and then when we knock he will open when we seek he will we will find him and he will show up and 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 we just have to remember also the promise of scripture in second chronicles seven fourteen, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin and heal their land and i also want to leave you with another verse from the book of first timothy chapter 2, where Paul instructs Timothy as follows, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, 
for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. Amen. It's so important to pray for our leaders. It's so important to pray for our nation, that God will give them um, victory and that will give them guidance and wisdom. But it's also important to pray for our nation right now for a revival, that God would revive this country, that God would use His church to rise up and and bring revival to the nation, that we would see a third great awakening, that we would see a great revival beginning in the church and spreading into our schools, spreading into our workplaces, spreading into even the jail cells and the prison cells of this country, of this world, freeing prisoners so that there's less and less people being incarcerated for evil deeds and for crimes committed. God can do the miraculous. God can do amazing things. He can heal cancers today. He can heal all kinds of diseases. He can heal COVID, no problem. For every COVID crown, there was a crown of thorns that was worn on the head of Jesus when he died on the cross. And when he was on that cross, he bled for our sins. And the Bible says that through his stripes, through his wounds, we are healed. And when we pray and appropriate the blessings of God and the promises that he has for us in our lives, God's miraculous grace intervenes in our lives and God blesses us. So let's continue to pray and press into God's presence because He loves us and He's willing to hear us in this time. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I come before You and I thank You, God, for the Word tonight, Lord, and I believe that You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You haven't changed. You're continuing to work and do the miraculous. You're you're mighty. You're powerful. Oh, Jesus, and you haven't changed. Lord, thank you that you are still answering prayer. And I pray, God, that you would continue to bless Bethesda Church, Lord, the families of our church, the young people, those who need your intervention right now. Please intervene, Father. God, I also pray that you would bring a revival, Lord, in our hearts and our families and in this nation, God, and that we would see your hand at work, Lord, knowing that you are doing exactly what needs to be done because you are all wise, you are all powerful, you are all merciful, O God. We love you and we worship you. Bless Bethesda Church, the families of our church, the children of our church, God, and bless this nation, Lord. Bless the president and those who are leading us, God. And God, bless the economy. And Lord, help us to lead a peaceful and quiet life in this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you richly.